Kia ora koutou. In the next half of this course, we're going to look at graphs and graph algorithms. So graphs or digraphs are a fundamental concept in computer science, both in theory and in application. And the reason they're such a fundamental and useful concept is that they distill the basic notion of a relationship between two objects, whatever those objects and the relation may be. So a graph is basically a set of points representing objects, and if the relationship we are modeling exists between two objects, we draw a line between the respective points. So we're going to focus on the computational and algorithmic aspects of graphs, but we need to start with some precise definitions to make sure we're all speaking the same language. So let's start by defining a graph. We've got an example graph here, and we say a graph is a collection of um, vertices and edges. Formally, we'll say that a graph is a pair of uh, a V, a non-empty vertex set, and E, uh, a set of edges which are re represented as unordered pairs of the N vertices. So our example here has vertices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means the vertex set V is just the set 0, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4. Uh, the edges are represented um, by the lines, so the edge set is E equals uh, 0, 1, 0, 3, 1, 2, and so on. So the six elements of our edge set correspond to the six lines in the graph. Notice that the um, that these are sets, so that they cannot have uh, repeated elements. In particular, we cannot have repeated edges, so we can't have a graph that looks like that. The edges in a graph have no direction. If we introduce direction, we have what we call a directed graph or a digraph. So here's an example of a digraph. The dots in digraph are now known as nodes, and the arrows joining them, like this arrow from 1 to 3, is known as an arc. Formally, a digraph is still a pair, G equals V, E, um, where V is now the set of nodes, and E is a set of ordered pairs of nodes representing the arcs. In this example, then, the node set is V equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, as before, and the arc set is E equals, so we have uh, an arc going from 0 to 2, so we write that like that, um, an arc going from 1 to 0, an arc going from uh, 1 to 3, and so on. Notice that I use round brackets to represent um, ordered pairs, and we use curly brackets to represent unordered pairs. So in general, we'll talk about uh, digraphs, nodes, and arcs, and the results will typically hold also for graphs, vertices, and edges. Um, sometimes our results will only hold for graphs, but in those cases we'll, we'll make an explicit mention of that. We will also assume that none of our graphs or digraphs have loops, so that if we have a node U like this, we can't have an arc that goes from U to U like this. So we'll disallow those. If we have an arc going from a node U to a node V, we'll say that V is adjacent to U, so that V is an out neighbor of U, and U is an in neighbor of V. So here in our example, um, 2 is adjacent to 0, 2 is an out neighbor of 0, and 0 is an in neighbor of 2. In the undirected case, if there is an edge uh, from U to V, then U is a neighbor of V, and V is a neighbor of U. There are a couple of notions of magnitude of a digraph. G equals 
VE. The order of a graph is the magnitude of the vertex set, while the size of the graph is the magnitude of the arc set. So I'll write order is just the magnitude of V, and uh, size is the magnitude of E. And typically we'll use N for the order and M for the size. So our, our example here, we have one, two, three, four, five nodes. So the order is five, and I think we had six arcs. So um, M, the size is six. If we fix the order of a digraph at N nodes, what is the maximum size of the digraph? Well, any node can be connected to any other node. So uh, in this example, with order three, this node can be connected to two others, this can be connected to two others, and this one can be connected by arcs to two others. So we have three times two equals six arcs. It, this, this result generalizes so that the maximum number of an arcs in a, in a digraph of order n is n times n minus one. In a graph where we've got undirected edges, then you can check that the maximum number is half of that, so n times n minus one over two. Of course, the smallest graph you can have is always size zero. Now, informally, we say that a graph is sparse if it is on the smaller side and dense if it is on the larger side. To try to formalize this, we'll call it a digraph sparse if it is of size um, big O n and dense if it is of size um, big O n squared. An important property of a node in a digraph is the number of arcs adjacent to it. We define the out degree of a node u as the number of arcs leaving it. So arcs having the form uh, u dash. And the in degree is the number of arcs pointing into it. So having the form dash u. In this digraph, node four has uh, in degree one, two as there are two arrows pointing into it, and out degree one is, a, is one arc pointing out of it. A node with out degree zero is known as a sink. For example, node two in this digraph. Anything that arrives into two cannot leave. A node with in degree zero is called a source. There are no sources in this digraph, but if we delete this arc here, there's now nothing coming into three, um, so it is a source. In a graph, we simply talk about degree instead of in degree or out degree. So the degree of a vertex is simply the number of neighbors a vertex has. For example, this vertex has degree one, two, three, four. We define a walk in a digraph as a sequence of nodes such that if node u is followed by v in the sequence, then there is an arc from u to v. So in this digraph, 3, 4, 1, o is a walk. But 1, o, 2, 4 is not a walk because there is no arc from 2 to 4. So 1, o, 2, 4 is not a walk. The length of a walk is the number of arcs involved in the walk, so that's one less than the number of nodes. And we call a walk a path if no nodes are repeated. So 3, 4, 1, 0 oh is a walk of length 3, and it's also a path as no nodes are repeated. The walk 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 3, is also a walk of length three, but it's not a path as the node one is repeated. Even the single node three, say, is a walk and path of uh, length zero. Finally, we'll call a walk a cycle 
if uh, the only repeated nodes are the first and the last. It is like a path, but it starts and ends at the same place. An example of a cycle in this diagraph is uh, one, three, four, one. So one, three, four, one is a cycle. Um, or simply one, four, one. It's also a cycle of length two. A path consisting of a single node is not considered a cycle. Notice that in an undirected graph, a walk with the form u, v, u, where we've just gone back and forth along the same edge, is not considered a cycle. So the smallest cycle in a graph is of length three. The distance between nodes u and v, which we'll write d, u, v, is the length of the shortest pass, path from u to v. And if there is no path from u to v, we'll say the distance from u to v is either undefined or infinite. So in our graph here, the distance from 1 to 4 is just 1. The distance from 1 to itself is 0. The distance from 1 to 2 well, is a path of length 2, so that must be 2. But the distance from 2 back to 1, well, we can't go from 2 to 1, so we'll call that infinite. Notice that in a graph, the distance is symmetric, so the distance from vertex u to v is always the same as the distance from v to u, simply by using the same path in reverse order. Let's finish our definitions then by looking at some common ways in which we can manipulate digraphs to create related graphs or digraphs. We'll start by defining the subdigraph of a digraph. So given a digraph G equals VE, a subdigraph is any digraph G dash equals V dash E dash, where the node set V dash is a subset of the original node set V, and the arc set E dash is a subset of the original arc set E. Notice that G dash still needs to be a digraph. So if we chose an arc UV and E dash, then both U and V need to be included in the subset V dash. For example, uh, 1, 3, 4 with arcs 1, 3 and 1, 4 is a subdigraph of this example graph, but if I try adding in an arc from say 1 to 0 without also adding in node 0, that would not be a digraph. In the special case that v dash includes all nodes of g, so if we also included 0 and 2, uh, the, the subdigraph is called spanning. Another special type of subdigraph is the induced subdigraph. Here, we take a set of nodes of the original digraph, and the new subdigraph includes all those nodes and arcs from G between those nodes. For example, the subdigraph introduced by induced by 1, 3, 4 of this graph would look simply like this, it would include all edges that exist between the chosen nodes in G. The reverse digraph is one where we just change the direction of all the arrows. We denote it G subscript R, so let's look at an example. It's exactly the same node set, except the arcs are reversed. So that one's reversed, that one's reversed, and so on. Here's a reverse graph. Sometimes we want to take a digraph and simply ignore the direction of the arcs, instead looking at the so-called underlying graph. In this example, the underlying graph looks like this. And notice, well, two arcs can exist between the same two nodes. They merge into the same edge, a single edge, in the underlying graph. Finally, 
The union of two or more digraphs which are completely disjoint is simply the union of the two node and arc sets. So if we have two digraphs, G1 equals V1 E1, G2 equals V2 E2, then the union is G equals V1 union V2, and E1 union E2.